All right, so um, so I'm Andrew D. I'm um, just a tad over 50, and I'm a carpenter. Um, I live in um, in Miranda in Sydney, New South Wales, where I manage a wardrobe company. So that's that's kind of what I do for a job. Um, yeah, and I, I guess I've been fishing these comps for since 2010 was my first comp. First, um, first with a Southern Brim series round. So not a Hobie round, but a, a Southern Brim round. And um, yeah, I got the magical donut for my first comp. So, and then I, I guess from there went went all the way. So that's, I, I think that should give people a bit of hope. You can start with a donut, donut, and kind of go anywhere. Yeah. So my my first Hobie series event was. Um, I'm not sure actually which round, it was in 2010, so we're now in about year 13. And my reasons for doing it have changed. I think when I first started, I was super competitive. Not that I'm not competitive now, but super competitive, and I liked the rush of, um, of competing, just going out there and trying to beat everyone else out in the water. Um, but now I've, it's changed a little bit for me. Now... I still want to win, don't get me wrong, every time I go out there I want to win, but it's also about getting together with a group of guys that, that I know and, and a group of new guys that kind of keeps me keeps me coming back. And then um, it's an interesting thing, like if, if I win a comp or do really well, it fires me up. And then if I lose a comp, that kind of fires me up as well because I, I want to work out what the winners did and, and, um, and try and emulate that, try and do better next time. So I guess that's the reasons why I keep coming back. So I bought my first Hobie in about 2008, I think. And prior to that, we'd been fishing out of paddle kayaks for quite myself and Stuart Dunn and a couple of other mates. And, um, and we fished, you know, maybe a couple of times a month. And that was good. We caught fish and that was awesome. But the day that I jumped into a Hobie and, and, and had the, um, the freedom of pedals and being able to travel big distances, we fished all the time. Like we fished every week. And then that evolved into competitions in, in 2010 and absolutely changed the course of my life. Like, it, it sounds a little bit dramatic, but it's, it's really accurate. Um, we've been all over the country. So we've been up and down the East Coast, across to Western Australia. And then back in 2013, so a while ago now, so I guess 10 years ago, I remember getting an email from Steve saying, do you reckon you'd be okay to go to China in about six weeks? And, um, and that was the first time I'd ever had a passport. So I had to get a passport. I didn't think I'd ever fly out of the country at that point. I was just over 40 and I thought, I'm never going to leave the country. And, um, and yeah, just little brim comps changed that. So we, we toddled off to China and, and did that. And, and since then, I've been back a few times. And, and also as, as when I won the world championship, um, I was able to go back out to Sweden, so I've been over there as well. So yeah, I think it's fair to say it's changed my life in a in a fantastic way. So when you when we did the first China comp, it was amazing. Like what happened is they've got this like a little amphitheater um, where they held all the um, all the ceremonies and what have you. And I remember we all walked down. None of us knew there was ten of us there. None of us knew what was going to happen, and we walked over the hill, and this amphitheater was filled with I don't know how many thousand people. Like it was just crazy. All the people from up in the up in the hills of China had come down to to watch what was going on, and there was like I don't know a couple of hours of shows and dancing and singing and all sorts of stuff. And that was just the ceremony. That was just the opening ceremony. So that's a little bit different to what we have here. There's no opening ceremony for a round, but um. Yeah, it was just an amazing experience in China, um, seeing the culture and the people. And, and, you know, at times the fishing was good, but the experience itself was, was so amazing. And then in terms of, and I've done a few, few in China there, and they're all something to aspire to. So if anyone um, out there what, is thinking that that would be a good thing, it's really worth pushing towards. Um, and then the world's. The Worlds was another level again, in terms of we were looked after so well. You travel to another country, um, you have to try and catch fish that you've never caught before um, and, and compete. And um, yeah, just an amazing experience. And I couldn't recommend it highly enough. If anyone's out there that wants to um, 
to really give this this thing a shake you can get there and you can travel the world you don't have you actually you don't have to be world champion you just have to qualify for the team to go yeah so my 360 i've got a, a pa12 360 and um it's such a such a good kayak it changed the way certainly the way you fit structure and even on days like today like the wind out there was 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 pretty horrible and just being able to turn around into the wind and change the direction of your yak on a dime is amazing and i didn't i remember there was one point where i was off the water for a while and i went back into my old outback which which i loved it was a great kayak and i remember going i i, you know, I have to get my 360 back i've like once it's one of those things once you've had it you can't live without it in, in my opinion so yeah a really great yak and um yeah hopefully i can um hopefully i can bring home some winning fish tomorrow I've, i'm going to have two favorites so one of my most favorite things to do is to go to somewhere like foster and take um heavy gear like really heavy gear you know 10 to 15 pound liter and 4,000 size reels lock them up and crank over the top of racks with with crankbaits and as soon as you get a fish try and skull drag it back in uh without having to go under a tray or anything like that that, that would be my probably probably my favorite and second to favorite is to do we're down at bem so to fish probably smaller places than this but just edge bites around amongst reeds and tea tree and all that sort of stuff and fish anything from plastics to hard bodies um just in a quiet quite lagoon on a on a on like a still day so not not much wind at all and just yeah just get away from everyone and um yeah, enjoy enjoy the experience so i'll give you a rundown of what i've got for here for bem river i've got two messiah customs so i've got a 10 foot um three to six kilo rod which is just a beast of a rod uh, and i'm I, it's fair to say that i'm only just learning how to use it um so you can get super long casts with these rods but the way you can bring, because there's such a long rod and such a big, I don't know, the way you fight the fish is different. I think you have a bigger advantage with these rods that I'm only just learning how to use. And then a nine foot six in the Messiah Customs as well, which is a, um, I think it's a three to six, a three to six kilo. And, and just for example, I was using that the other day with a, with a worm, worm hook, so unweighted plastic, and I was able to, to skip the, the lure out of the water, and it looks so much like a prawn. Um, un, it was unbelievable. So it was prior to that, I was fishing hard bodies, and I went to the soft plastic, and I went from you know one bite every two or three carts to fish every cast. So I think just the, the action on that long rod with the soft plastic just changed, changed the way that, that lure worked. So that's my that's my two main rods here, and then I've got um, a couple of really nice Miller rods, which I'm going to have for um, for soft plastics and and what have you. So I'm basically running Millers and um, Messiah Customs at the moment for the weekend. So all really nice gear, really really nice gear. My a couple of my favourite lures over the last couple of years has been a River to Sea Baby vibe. So Adam Costa at Fishing.com.au he got a production run of black so it's a, a matte black baby vibe it's like tiny lure but this thing slays fish um particularly in um in my still locations we got a fish on, on one today and, and then put it away for tomorrow um so definitely the baby vibe it seems to catch fish everywhere and it's also really good on bridge pylons um then i can also interestingly enough i can't go past a, a matte black crank so I use a couple of different brands. I use the Atomic um, Mid and the Pro Lua S36. So those two two lures as a as a cranking lure, sometimes in over the mangroves or in shallow situations. And then I guess the other thing would be would have to be a bent minnow. Just the bent minnow just seems to catch fish when other lures can't seem to catch them. There's something about the action of that lure that seems to fire the fish up so yeah there's nearly always a bent minnow tied on if there's a chance of a surface bite so those, those would be my favorites at the moment oh look i think sponsorship overall is a good thing it gives it's a two-way street so it gives the angler a way to 
to particularly fish competitions at a, at a reduced cost and, and, and also sometimes get into the development of lures, which I think is really good. Um, but it's a double-edged sword. Once you become tied into one company, um, you, you really should be using their lures most of the time when you're fishing comps. But sometimes they don't have the right lure for the day. So, um, so yeah, I think that becomes tricky for, a, um, for an angler who wants to win a competition. However, there's also a lot of companies out there that, that, that recognize this fact and allow their sponsored anglers, if need be, to use another lure. So, um, yeah, but overall, I think sponsorship's good. All right, so middle of last year, I, um, I'll, I'll give you the full rundown. So middle of last year, I reached out to Greg Vinyl at the Australian Lure Fishing Podcast and asked him if he could do a series on targeting just big brim. And he said, that's a great idea. Why don't you do it? Now, I was sitting home at COVID, with COVID at the time. I went, all right, well, some, podcasting was something that I wanted to do. So I started there and, and I produced a, um, a series for the Australian Lure Fishing Podcast on catching and targeting big brim, which you can, you can still go and listen to. There's a new one coming out shortly. And then that evolved from there because I wanted to have my own podcast. I wanted to, um, to be able to share the things that I want to share. So... Jason Meats actually rang me up. I'd interviewed him for the Big Brim series, and he said, why don't you do a review of the, you know, specifically the Hobie comps? So each time we do a round, just speak to the winners and, you know, give a bit of a rundown. So then we get a history of things. And my goodness, this thing's evolved massively. Um, I started, I think I released three or four for the first, you know, back in January late January, January 31. And what we do is I contact the, um, the place getters and we have a chat about what they did on their day and, um, and how they caught their fish and, and what have you. And what that does is we're creating a back catalog of all different arenas of how people, people won competitions there, how they caught their brim. So and even the, the podcast is evolving now. Um, with with feedback from from a lot of listeners and a lot of people i don't know we're we're going to evolve into something bigger bigger and better again um and definitely um there's going to be a lot more beginner stuff it surprised me how many people out there would like to hear a lot of basic basic um i guess brim techniques and what have you so that's something we'll be looking at into the future so yeah it's been really been a really good ride and um yeah it's been a lot of fun yeah, so the, the, the name of the podcast is the, um, is the Brim Fishing Project. And there's been a couple of shows that have surprised me in terms of popularity. Um, the Hobie Calendar, so that was, that was one that, that was, was the highest ranked show for, for a very long time. Um, and the beginner show surprised me. We recorded a show which we tried to explain. I did it with Carl Dubois, who's another seasoned angler. And... We try to explain to the listener what goes on at a Hobie comp, how to enter and, and, and what have you. And, um, and that one got a lot, a lot of downloads, a lot of interest. And um, it, was kind of, it was kind of fun to do. Um, There's a couple of little, little light-hearted digs at Luke K, so that was pretty fun. Um, I have to think for a second. <laughs> um... And look, in, in terms of rounds, we've covered um, Camden Haven, we've covered here at Bem River, we've covered Marlow, um, we've got one one that we've started recording for Malakuta, for the ABT, we've covered the Perth ABT comp held back in um, middle of February, I think. So, you know, we're covering rounds all around the country. We're not limiting, I'm not going to limit to just Hobie comps. We'll do the ABTs and, and maybe even the big brims, depending on time. So, yeah, that, that's where it is. So if you're keen, keen to work out how to catch brim, definitely tune into the Brim Fishing Project. I think there's something there, there for a lot of people, you know, whether you're a, a tournament angler or just a keen brim fisherman. 
Look, three things that you should, that, that I always carry. Um, I, I always carry my Daiwa split ring pliers because um, I do everything with them from, um, from cut braid to pull hooks out to change, change split rings. Um, always carry enough water. Like for me on a hot day, if you go out Saturday and don't drink properly, Sunday becomes very hard. So definitely take enough water. Um, and then one that I don't see a lot anymore with power poles and around, um, always take a drift chute, like a drift chute or a sea anchor. So you can slow your drift and cover a lot more water than just using your power pole to up and to, you know, to, to anchor up and then drift off. I think a drift chute's a, a, an underutilized piece of equipment for a kayak angler. So yeah, that'd be three things. Yeah, so the kayak fishing, it really falls into two, two compartments for me. Um, the first and probably most important is I do like to, go, I do like to fish alone, um, to go out just by myself and, you know, sometimes just turn the phone off so that no one, no one can reach you and just have that time for yourself to, um, to decompress from, from work or from home or for whatever is going on, you know, and catch a fish and, and just enjoy the day um, and I find that the times, there's been times recently where I haven't fished, you know, for much, I haven't fished much at all. And I noticed that I'm just a little bit crankier, a little bit more on edge. So mentally, it's a good thing for me to get out and spend, you know, several hours just floating around, catching a fish. So that would be the first part. And the second part is, which is, is just as important is to come to places like this, where we meet up with people that, that we've now got to know over a period of 10, 15 years as mates and hang out and, and, and fish together, even though you're kind of fishing against each other, you're still hanging out together and, you know, nights like tonight, um, you know, everyone, everyone will go to the only place in town to have dinner, the pub and, and, and hang out. So I think that's also important, whether you're a guy or girl or, you know, man or child, it doesn't really matter. So, yeah, it's a, it's a, it's a big part of my life. Yeah, if, if I could finish up um, and speak to the, to the new anglers or people that might, might be watching this and are interested in kayak fishing or kayak competition fishing, it doesn't actually matter, you don't have to compete. Um, I would say just get in and have a go. You know, I'm very... <laughs> Um, how do I put this? I'm a Hobie guy. Like, I really believe strongly in the product because I've been using it for years and, and it's just amazing. But it doesn't really matter whether it's a Hobie or any brand of kayak. Just get out on the water and, and, um, and have a go. And then if anyone's interested in doing competitions, just come along. Come along, come along to a Hobie, a Yak Hunters. It doesn't matter what you do. Just come and have a go. We're all just guys. Come say hello and and have some fun.